All righty, everyone. Welcome to the LGBTQ Health Coalition meeting, um, November the 8th, 2021. It's very hard to believe that this is our last meeting for the year, um, and I'm going into my second year with being able to serve you. Um, so as always, it's a pleasure um, to serve everyone uh, in this position. Um, and so we're going to go right ahead into this meeting. We'll do um, some um, suggestions that uh, we here at Columbus Public Health uh, want to solicit your information and get some ideas for. So we'll talk about that with the use of the Jamboard that is in the chat. So here's our agenda for today. So we will um, have some updates by me, presentation by my colleague Elizabeth uh, DeLuca Concho uh, about the art gallery project. Um, and then we'll have our regular updates and then we'll have any suggestions um, or anything that you would like to share. Uh, we have a new outreach worker here at Columbus Public Health. So he has some exciting information that he would like to share with you um, in this meeting as well. So we're now still in COVID-19 here, um, about 20 months into COVID-19. Um, and so we are now at the stage of vaccinating five to 11 year olds. Um, I've sent this out into the update. So just wanted to let you know that the children are available for the $100 vaccine cash participating at the clinics while supplies last. Um, so we're on our way with doing that. Uh, the last numbers that I was able to receive, uh, we vaccinated about 200 kids here at CPH. Um, and that was on Friday. And I want to say about 100 uh, at Westgate, uh, which was on last Friday as well. And then today, uh, when I walked through the clinic, um, there was a lot of kids uh, with their families there. Um, so again, this is information and fact sheets that you wanna have. Um, and then we're always um, have advice, you know, if you wanna talk to someone with a health professional, um, just make sure that you do that with your, uh, with your pedi pediatrician. This is new hot off the press um, that we are now offering a uh, Saturday clinic for pediatric doses of um, COVID-19, 5 to 11. It is their first and their second dose. Um, they will offer, uh, we will offer, offer, excuse me, the pediatric doses for 5 to 11, still vaccinating individuals who want to get their first and whoever need to get their second, um, and then their boosters as well. And so we're now we're in the uh, mode of offering boosters as well. So that will be at the Saturday clinic. It will start on Saturday, November the 13th. Um, and then we will be having the $100 vaccine cash for those individuals who will be having their first dose. Um, and then in addition to that, we have um, our other clinic that we have here every day at Columbus Public Health from 9 to 4 p.m. Um, you can get your boosters, you can get the pediatric, you can get your second dose, you can get your booster, and you can get your flu vaccination. And that is every day from 9 to 4. Um, and then we have a vaccine cash sat site where you can get all the same services and that is from nine to four at Linden on Mondays. Then you can go to any of our fire stations and get um, any of the COVID-19 vaccinations and flu shots. Then we're doing another uh, vaccine cash site, which is at Barrett Community, uh, Community Center, which is on the south side on Woodrow, and that's from 11 to 6 p.m. Uh, so feel free to come and visit me at any of those times. Not that that is the one that I am at. Um, I do take lunch as well. So come visit me, come talk to me, come get your booster, come bring a friend. Um, and that's to all of ours. Um, and then uh, fire station um, on the Thursdays. We're at the Cleveland Avenue. And then our last vaccine cash site is on Wednesday, uh, is at Westgate on the west side from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, so wherever you see the dollar signs, that is where we're um, giving out cash at. Um, but the fire stations, we're not giving out cash at our fire stations, but they are a partner in helping us um, to get vaccines. vaccines. Any questions about that? All righty. So I uh, just want to remind you of our wellness center here um, at Columbus Public Health. These are some of the services that we are offering here at Columbus Public Health um, that, uh, that we offer. And so we want to talk a little bit more about that as Columbus Public Health is adding an additional clinic. Uh, so if you know at Columbus Public Health, we have uh, a women's clinic. And so now we're 
um, adding um, a second clinic, uh, which is our tentatively now our men's clinic, but um, I have made sure that that is a clinic that where it's non-binary so that we have a clinic that is inclusive of all. So we want to definitely make sure that um, that happens and that's inclusive for everyone. So if everyone would go to that Jamboard there and that site there, you just click on the link um, that I've sent out to everybody there. And I'm going to, can everyone still see my screen? All righty. So the first one is, um, what would be some suggestions for a name for a clinic? Um, and the way that you could put your suggestion there on the Jamboard is just click on it, and then you can just type whatever you want to type there. So I'm going to do the number one, and uh, I want to just say just for GP, the Wellness Center. And anyone else, feel free to take some time and just to click on it and just add your thoughts there. Let's click on the yellow tab here and then you can write whatever you want to. If you're having any problems, just let me know. Hey, Brandon. Yes. Could you remind us what the services are that they'll be providing at this clinic? I sure can. I'll read it because that would be too much for me to go back. Uh, wellness exams including cancer screenings and um, just to put a note there, I just had a meeting with Jill Price this morning, and so Mark, we're going to do um, some education and screenings around cancer in the LGBTQ community. Same day, contraception, contraception, testing and treatment of sexual and transmitted infections, PrEP, a daily pill to help prevent HIV, reproductive life planning, and smoking sensation help. And so this is just as suggestions um, to help us to think about as we are getting ready to probably come back to very, um, to the community um, and to think about naming. Um, but you can click on the tab there and think and help us to think about names as we're doing our brainstorm. One more thing, Brandon. I don't know if anyone else is having this problem, but I'm in view only mode. So I can't edit. Thank you. Okay, I'm about to say I'll copy the link again. I will put the uh, link in there for everyone to fill out. And everyone should have the mode to be able to edit. So please give us some suggestions back on what that may look like um, as far as that name. Again, we definitely want um, to be as inclusive as poss um, um, possible. Um, and this is new and innovative for us as we begin to expand, um, to expand our services. Thank you for the Sexual Health and Wellness Center. Joseph, is that you? You look so different. Thank you. Gotta switch it up uh, and smile. <laughs> And again, all you had to do is just to click on the number and edit there. I like that, public, public wellness center. Okay, I like that, all right. Seeing some good things there. All-inclusive wellness center, I like that. And just to give you again some context about this, this is just some brainstorming ideas. Um, 
we probably will do more uh, formal conversations uh, with soliciting the community um, and having discussions about that, using some imagery um, and talking about all the services that uh, we will offer. All righty, I am going to um, Elizabeth, I think we currently do sell, um, we do uh, service teams, so yes. Yes. Hi, Shanti, can you put that on the jam board, please? I like that. Thank you. Alrighty, I'm going to switch the slide uh, in a few seconds. Uh, I like that, Samuel. Do you have the um, do you have the link? Let me put the link on there so you can put that on the Jamboard. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Just click on it and put it on the Jamboard there. And I like this because um, I want everyone to think about clinics that either you or you feel comfortable with and is any individual in the community coming to making sure that uh, it is welcoming and affirming. Thank you for all of your suggestions. Alrighty, the next thing that we're going to put in here is that cannot believe that we are on the horizon for 2022. Um, and so for this year, um, we, we have some kind of knowns. We know that COVID is still looming over us, um, but we do know that we have vaccinations that is available to individuals. Um, we know that there are some people that are comfortable with going back into community and meeting person, uh, in person and some that are not. But then um, we also know, or um, and part of this part of Columbus Public Health, this is the Center for Public Health Innovation. Um, and our job is a lot of times is um, addressing health disparities and um, racism as it relates to public health. So my job now is that I am the student. You guys are going to provide me with ideas that you would like to see as a coalition for us to do as a coalition for program ideas um, and that we probably can do as a department. Um, for here, all you have to do is to click over here on this right side. There's a sticky note and you can write on the sticky note what your ideas that you would like for us to do. What I will do is that I would um, take these ideas, put it into one document, um, and then we will talk about in the subcommittees um, what we can do better. Thank you so much for loving language, the words that you, um, to use to make welcoming spaces for LGQPTI clients. I like that. All right. Anyone else, if you want to put some ideals, ideas there, then we greatly appreciate it. Again, that's just simply hovering over the sticky tab note here, and then you can write in it and push. Thank you. Conversations on two spirited individuals. I like that in the indigenous community. I like all of these intersectionality in the LGBTQ community. Love it. Any more ideas? On this ideas too, I didn't put um, any partners that we should be working with and having at the table. 
Um, could you also put that there in the sticky notes there so that I will have an idea of who they are um, and who I should reach out to. I love these ideas. Thank you, everyone. Brandon, I'm tr having trouble getting a blank sticky note. I must be doing something wrong. No problem. Um, I will. I'll create one for you. <laughs> I'll create one for you, and then I hate to, um, I hate to can, be a nudge, nudge. You know. You don't. No, it's no problem. So just <laughs> click on right there where your name is at, and then you can edit that. Add that to there. And if anyone else has any problem with getting any sticky notes there. If I click on it, it should open up for me. Yep. You see where you put your name at? Yeah, I it? see my name, but I can't. I've been clicking on it. It's not opening. Oh, I can Make send sure. you. Yeah, I can. Oh, wait a second. OK, 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 got I got it. it. Yeah, got it. OK, well, no it was up, but now it went away. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Love all these ideas. Love all these ideas. Love it. So I love the one LGBT in the Latino Columbia community in Columbus mental health well mental health wellness acceptance. Who was the person who put that one? Because oh Sammy, okay. So Joseph, I think Joseph, didn't we we we've had this this conversation amongst each other for a while. Um, we're trying to get into the Latino community, so. Um, I'm glad that you put that there. All righty. Thank you, thank you, everyone. I'm going to put this into a document. Um, we will talk more about that. And um, again, um, I will take all of your um, ideas. Um, the current set of the, um, of the HIV epidemic uh, is probably something that I'm going to have a meeting with at three o'clock today uh, to talk about that for World AIDS Day. So, uh, so thank you, uh, Samuel, for uh, putting that there. All righty, and then feel free to always. Um, this will be sent to everyone in the meeting notes. Um, so, um, um, hi, Dorian. Yes, so Dorian, you can add on. So this is program ideas for 2022. And then here is the um, copy of the Jamboard. And then the idea uh, for the slide, slide one was, I'm sorry, was um, ideas for our wellness center that we want to make sure that's inclusive for everybody. And then slide two is for program ideas. So you can add that on as your leisure. I am going to now give the floor to my colleague, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, let me get your slideshow ready. And the floor is yours. Thank you, Brandon. You're welcome. All right. So everybody here today, you may or may not have heard, we are currently doing this really exciting project for youth. And we wanted to tell you all about it so that you can follow it, like it, comment it on our Instagram page. So if you go to the next slide, Brandon, <clears throat> our art gallery project is actually a project of the Youth Tobacco Use Prevention Working Group. And we've been planning this since March of 2021. So we've been planning it for the better part of the year. And it was inspired by something that was done out in Duluth, Minnesota, which after they held their in-person event, they were able to have decision makers attend that event and they passed a citywide, <clears throat> excuse me, a citywide flavored tobacco restriction policy thereafter. So they were really successful. We love the idea and we wanted to do something for ourselves. So if you might be wondering, why do we need a flavored tobacco restriction policy? What we know is that youth are much, much more likely to start using tobacco products if they're flavored tobacco products. And if they get addicted using the high content of nicotine that we often see in e-cigarettes or vapes, then they're customers for life. So sometimes they start out with flavored tobacco products and then end up going to the non-flavored or maybe to menthols and they get addicted for life. 
So to be able to prevent youth from becoming addicted and for those individuals who may be already addicted to menthol cigarettes or other tobacco products, we want to eliminate the flavored products that are being sold within the city of Columbus. That's our goal. So our other goals were to engage at least 30 youth in this process. And by youth, we mean ages 14 to 24. And I'll tell you who we actually got later. And we are also trying to post all of their projects. So they created art projects, trying to pass the policy, talking about their stories, how they have directly been impacted by this issue and why they think we need policy change. So we are posting their art to Instagram and we're hoping for 300 interactions and overall just trying to advocate for that policy change. So on the next slide, here's how it's gone so far. So in October, we had four, four meeting nights. So we decided to go virtual because of COVID, but we had four virtual nights and we had 32 youth who participated in those learning and creativity nights, 15 of whom have already submitted their final projects. So those are those art projects advocating for policy change. And in the pictures, you can see, we gave them some incentives. We gave them a really nice art kit. We gave them a drawing pad. We gave them all kinds of really cool things. And we actually created a documentary of this process that I'm going to share a teaser, or you could go to our Instagram page and see it for yourself. And the documentary showcases the youth's words as well as some of the projects that we've done so far. So I highly encourage you to check that out. You can find it at Drug Free Because, and I'll write that in the comments here on Instagram. And if you're sitting here thinking, I don't have an Instagram, how can I participate? We are going to be cross-posting on Facebook. So keep an eye out on the CPH Facebook page for some updates on that too. So overall, our youth have been really excited, really engaged. We've had so much engagement with them and they really want to make change. If you go to the next slide, Brandon, you can actually see some of the things that they've created. So here are a couple of the submissions. I can't show you all of them, but here are some of them. So it's really hard to read, but up in the, the left-hand corner on this left side page or left side image, you can see an image that says, is it worth it? And this student shares how her story, how she having asthma and growing up with family members who are using tobacco, how she has been impacted. On the right-hand side, this youth shows how he had to decide between different ways of life. On the one hand, he decided that he could either be an athlete or he could, on the other hand, follow in a, the steps of some family members who had been addicted and which one he actually chose. If you go to the next slide, this one over here on the left-hand side did something pretty similar. So talking about how you can grow, you can become something bigger, or on the other side, if you're focused on tobacco, looking at denial and how your body thinks that you need it because it becomes addicted. And um, I don't know, but I need help, those sorts of things. So they really looked at it from a mental health perspective. They really looked at it from the perspective of if I want to grow, if I want to become something bigger and better than who I am right now, then I need to um, try to counteract this flavored tobacco pandemic that we're having right now. And hopefully, Brandon, if you click on the, the video over there on the right hand side, it'll play. This was another submission. Can everyone hear this? No. No? Okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. So you can't hear it, but this student is talking about her family members who are using tobacco and how that impacted her life and how she wants to have a different future than that. So we really had some creative projects. Uh, yes, I think that is cause. <laughs> so glad to know that we have some recognizable things here. Hold on, I think I can play it um, one second. See if Brandon can work some magic. Can you hear that? No, unfortunately we can't. that no but don't worry if you go to our drug free because page on instagram you'll get to see it i believe this one has already posted <clears throat> so please do check it out oh, that's and my, that's my high school what was that that's my high school columbus alternative high school 
<laughs> you went to you went to Kaz too? I did, yeah. Hey, there you go. So we got a couple of Kaz alumni. Uh, I think that we had, I think we had a whole handful of Kaz students who participated, and because of the nature of the, <laughs> yep, we got a couple of Kaz alumni. That's awesome. Because of the virtual nature of our event, we were able to get students from all over the city, which was really cool. Originally, when we planned on doing it in person, we were expecting to only get people from Linden. So it's really nice that we were able to get some representation from different schools. I would say the majority came from South High School, but we also got Kaz, we got Beechcroft, we got uh, Groveport, and one more that I can't think of off the top of my head. Oh, Linda McKinley. So we got quite a few different ones, which is really great. And if you go to that last slide for me there, Brandon, I just want to put in another plug. So follow us on Drug Free Because, please like, please comment. These kids have done so much amazing work. They've been really involved and they really could use your support. We did actually get the city council president to follow us and he has been liking as well. So the youth are really excited about that. Our ultimate goal is to take all of the comments, take all of the likes, take all of the momentum that we're building with this and take it in front of city council and other decision makers and say, with the youth at the forefront, this is how we have been impacted and this is why we need to make a change. So the more people we can get talking about this, the more positive responses, the stronger argument we can make to make lasting policy change. And <clears throat> Again, this is youth focused. So please do share. You can share from your organizational page. You can share from your personal page and follow us, like us, comment. Just share the love, share the positivity. We'd really appreciate that. Thank you, Elizabeth. All righty, we're going to go right into our organizational updates. I had a question, Brandon, for oh, Elizabeth. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I'm at the drug free because on Instagram and I was just wondering at the beginning of the video, there's a few videos on here. Mm -hmm. Do you know, is it the one that says art gallery project 2021 or is it a yes. different one? Okay, so I just we, didn't know on that one. Yeah, it's drug free because, and I know there's a couple of similar names on Instagram, but we are the art gallery project one. And there are a couple of videos we posted. We posted a couple of pieces of the documentary that we made. And then there's the youth video that we just tried to watch, but we couldn't hear the sound. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Thank you so much for following us. Oh, I assume you followed us. I hope you did. You know I'm gonna. Hey, all right, thanks. So much, Elizabeth. All righty, so we're gonna go to our uh, organizations updates and Joseph, you have the floor. All right. Hi. Um, let me pull up what updates I have for us. Um, yes. So, hey, everybody. Um, so, at Equality Ohio, um, as usual, we've been paying attention to the many happenings at the state legislature. Um, we are disappointed about the introduction of House Bill 454, um, which uh, is a uh, includes very unfortunate attack on um, young uh, trans and gender expansive individuals um, and access to uh, affirming health care for minors. So I'm going to share the uh, statement and information that we have gathered on our website on that bill, and we actually have as a portion of that part of our page, um, a uh, uh, some it. ways to uh, actually get involved. Did you need to share it on my um, share your screen? I gave you co-host privileges. Oh, you know what? That is okay. Um, okay. I don't have too much to share this in your own time. I just want to share this resource. Um, I'm also going to share a link for submitting testimony. Let me just pull that up really quick. In case um, that is relevant for anyone in this space or anyone that you know, you know what these links are coming out really, really long, and I don't know why that's happening. Um, other than that, um, we are paying We are trying to take action against the um, 
the attacks on trans youth in regard to sports bans. We have a campaign that we started called the Ohio Play Campaign. And what we are asking for is for um, individuals to actually submit videos. Um, we find that there's something about actually seeing individuals' faces, right? And uh, sort of like the talking in person um, that hits different. Um, so I'm gonna share the link to the Ohio Play Ohio can play campaign and um, how you can uh, submit videos for that. We actually have um, a sample script that you can use if this is something that you are interested and able to um, participate in. I'm also sharing, I have a wonderful colleague who is our faith coordinator, Reverend J.M. Triplett. Um, they have started something called Faithful Fridays, where um, they submit a video conversation every Friday on a different topic. Um, I'm going to share the um, video that was just created this past Friday, which focuses on the holiday season and the struggles that many of us in the LGBTQ community um, often experience, right? Troubles with, um, with family and kind of the re-traumatization -traum that we often experience um, going back to our families for shared meals and... Um, and traumatic conversation. <laughs> so check out what JM has to say there. It's, it's really, really good. I appreciate everything that my colleague um, uh, has to say. We also have coming up for the holidays, a holiday text circle, which, which is just like a nice, um, a nice thing that you can sign up for, for um, affirming uh, chosen family um, messages throughout the holidays. So I'm gonna go ahead and share um, the link where you can sign up for that as well. That's most of the updates Updates that I have. I don't have too much else to share. I'll go ahead and, ahead and give up the floor to anyone else. I, I, have, a, I have a question, Joseph. I heard um, Kim Burroughs did a great presentation at Transforming Care about that uh, Ohio revised code that lets providers reject anybody they don't like for any reason. And she said at the time they were waiting to find out if people had 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 experienced that or not. And I was just wondering if you all have heard anything about that yet, as far as people being affected by it. I mean, it's an, I don't, it, it still amazes me it got into the, the revised code, but it did. Right, yeah, that's the, um, that's the provision that was snuck into the budget. Right. Um, I, I know that um, with our legal clinic, um, because of, um, privacy concerns, I, I don't always hear directly some of the stories that come through to our legal clinic. Okay. That is a question that I can check in with, uh, with Kim okay. and with some of well, our other no, attorneys. That's okay. I've been in touch with Kim and I'm mm -hmm. trying to pull something together about that and some of this other anti-LGBTQ stuff to share at the next board meeting of the League of Women Voters in Metro Columbus. No one had heard about the thing that got snuck. No, one person who was actually a nurse knew about what had been snuck into the budget, but the rest of our board was just amazed. So I'm gonna pull some stuff together for, mm -hmm. uh, and I've been in touch with Kim Burroughs. So I, I just thought I'd throw it in you know, also to remind people about it. It's, it's, it, yeah, it is a pretty awful, disgusting idea. And those of us like who are professionals, like social workers, we also can reject people, even though it's a violation of our um, code of ethics. Same thing for nurses, yeah. and I guess most of the other professionals. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely wild. And I guess that's a, that's a good reminder. Uh, if there's anyone in this space that does hear of someone who experiences um, an atrocity of that nature, please do connect them with, with us and with our legal clinic. Um, again, our legal clinic is here to, to, to serve um, LGBTQ Ohioans that are, that are facing these complicated, oh, these, uh, these complicated issues in this landscape that we have to navigate through. So yeah. thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Appreciate that, Ellen. Kimberly, Sue, uh, I know you had asked me prior to the meeting uh, if someone was going to report out on it. Did you have anything that you wanted to uh, contribute to the space? Um, regarding Regarding this is something that um, I was going to try to fit in if necessary or if appropriate for 
the leadership uh, roundtable summary, but um, so um, just just kind of a couple of fine points on on it. The on uh, five uh, four fifty four. Um, the uh, so Ohio Republicans introduced this bill to ban trans youth from accessing med medical care. Um, just some of the highlights: it forbids medical health care professionals prov from providing transitional care to any trans non-binary or gender non-conforming person under 18, regardless of parental consent, regardless of wishes of, of the patient, regardless of diagnosis or regardless of previous care plans. And it forbids insurance from covering necessary care for trans non-binary or GNC minors. It forbids tax, ded tax deductions for healthcare premiums for transitional care. Uh, it forbids tax deductions for healthcare premiums for, um, uh, I just, okay, I just read that. Um, Ohio physicians could lose their medical license for following current standards of care, care. And also, as far as the schools go, it requires staff at all Ohio schools to out students they assume are transgender to their parents or legal guardians. So it's, um, it's really, really a terrible, uh, a ter terrible bill. It's probably, uh, hopefully, unconstitutional, but hopefully it never gets that far where, where we have to test that theory and, um, or that probably that, that truth. And, um, do that, but yeah, that's what I wanted to. I just wanted to add that. So, oh, thank you. And just to make another point, you know, the fair district stuff. I don't know how many of you were following it, but the way the legislature is gerrymandered, and at least the state plan that the committee came up with is going to the Ohio Supreme Court. But now they're futzing around with the um, uh, the plan for the for the congressional seats. So it's all pretty, I guess there have been some hearings this week and it's it's another kind of ugly thing, but you know, the fair district stuff, um, if anybody who's interested can look up fair districts and get the latest on that, but it certainly has something to do with these crazy things being pulled together by the legislature and for them to get, you know, total ability to pass this kind of stuff. Just to throw that in. There was also a really good um, protest gathering that took place on Saturday at the State House um, to speak out specifically against House Bill 454. Um, and so if more opportunities like that, if I come across more of those, I'd be happy to send them to this group. Um, it was very energizing and, and wonderful to see how many young people actually are, are doing organizing for themselves and showing up um, to speak out and have a voice. Mm -hmm. And Kimberly Sue, I will uh, go ahead and give the floor back to you so that you can report out on the organization that you represent. All right, um, so I'm going to uh, report a little bit on the leadership roundtable um, on the uh, Ohio Name Change Legal Clinic and on Octopus LLC. So as far as the L LGBTQ leadership roundtable, um, there have been two meetings uh, since we last met here um, and uh, a meeting that will be tomorrow. So I'll, I'll kind of run through those. Um, so the September 14th meeting, um, we had a special guest, Nan Whaley, a candidate for governor or for Ohio governor who spoke, yeah. which was very exciting to, uh, to get to talk to, to Nan and have, um, you know, have that opportunity to see, uh, see what her plans are. I'm excited about that personally. Um, and then group, uh, group purpose as drafted by the steering committee. So what we had drafted that were, uh, is out for review um, is the Columbus and Central Ohio LGBTQ plus leadership roundtables purpose is to support and leverage our collective power so that our LGBTQ plus communities, particularly the most marginalized, thrive through access to lived and justice oriented equality. So that is, uh, and that act has been uh, adopted. Um, um, Chris Kozad talked a little bit about September 11th, 20th anniversary. Um, Aaron Upchurch about September is uh, Suicide Awareness Month. And then um, there was some discussion about the um, Ohio Attorney General David Yost uh, litigation uh, that Siobhan talked about. Um, so um, Attorney General Yost and 19 other Republican Attorney Generals are suing the federal government in an ill-informed effort to try to overturn anti-discrimination protections for LGBTQ plus and transgender people established by federal agencies and Supreme Court's Bostock ruling and through executive orders issued by President Biden. 
Equality Ohio's new public policy director, Maria Bruno, said to the Columbus Dispatch, it's a shame that as Ohio pushes for economic recovery and to keep residents safe in an historic pandemic, Attorney General Yost is deciding to spend our precious government resources fighting for the right to discriminate. AG Yost's decisions to participate in this misguided lawsuit against LGBTQ plus people pushes Ohio down the wrong path. And then we also talked um, about short north safety, uh, some of the gun violence and uh, some of the grinder murders that have taken place, um, membership and participation, um, who's not at the table for the round table, who we uh, you know, should be inviting, inviting in. Um, and then uh, information about the LGBTQ plus candidates that we're going to be um, running. Um, Bill Hedrick for Franklin County Municipal Court, Scott Kirschman for the Environmental Court and Mike McAllister for Franklin County Municipal Court. And then um, about upcoming meetings, um, we're going, we were gonna have a start speaker then the next month, um, which is um, the uh, Stands for Striving Toward Anti-Racism Together. Um, and then um, we're hoping at some point to have Police Chief Bryant and Safety Director Robert Clark. Um, important of dates and events which had happened at that time and which did occur, Trans Ohio Symposium um, was in September, Stonewall's 40th anniversary in September, Equality Ohio Allies and Advocates in September, Equitas Transforming Care in October, Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, the month through September 15th through October 15th. There was the 2021 Newark Ohio Pride Festival on October 2nd and Columbus Community Pride on uh, October the 9th. Then for um, Tuesday, October 12th, um, we had our guest speaker, uh, Tori Cooper, who is Director of Community Engagement um, for Transgender Justice Initiative at the Human Rights Campaign. And she spoke to us um, at the request of the START group um, and was absolutely amazing. Um, wonderful, wonderful presentation and kind of kept us all on our toes as she uh, got uh, called, on, called on people at random to, uh, to respond to uh, things that she was talking about. Um, Aaron Upchurch uh, presenting the findings and recommendations from the transformative justice work since 2017. Um, and I've been uh, happy to be a, be a part of that since the beginning um, and um, where, that, where that has gone, where that has taken us. Um, then there was uh, inf information on Spectrum, the Buckeye Ranch update and the letter signed by 35 organizations, uh, which was sent to Spectrum. Uh, Thursday, October 7th, uh, the Buckeye Flame article would run on October 8th, and Spectrum had added a disclaimer to the story, but still refuses to take the story down. Um, and this was about um, a young person in conversion therapy, and um, the um, it, it, it brought into play um, some of the things that, um, which don't really exist as positives for conversion therapy, but that the person um, on the other side of that was was saying, and so um, that's that was it was a problematic article. And then discussion and brainstorming about the status of systemic racism within Equitas Health that has been made public by the recent dispatch ad at, <clears throat> at that time. Um, sharing links to articles and statements from various media outlets, uh, community organizations as well regarding that. Uh, a statement of employees and former employees uh, witnessing uh, information. A document including demands from employees and former and former employees, uh, the Equitas response, and then a comparison chart um, listed the demands and responses side by side for comparing um, what Equitas Health was proposing and what um, was being uh, respond how uh, what I'm sorry what the demands were uh, and then what, how that was being responded to by Equitas Health that um, I put that together. And then Jaron Terry put together a draft of a statement for member organizations to um, support uh, what was going on. Due to the Equitas Health situation, we had a special meeting on October 19th to discuss the Equitas Health situation. Um, that we got an update from uh, Equitas Health and to talk about the round table um, and can use, uh, to use our collective power to lift up the voices of BIPOC employees and former employees of Equitas and add our collective voices to the dialogue. So that took place on October 19th. Um, then um, tomorrow, November 9th, uh, we will have an Equitas health update probably from um, um, DeBay from, uh, from Equitas Health, um, Columbus public health update from uh, Brandon. 
um, review up, uh, the election updates from Siobhan, um, a state house update from Siobhan um, KYC and uh, um, Ken, uh, from Buckeye, uh, Buckeye Flame. Um, there's going to be a letter going out from um, Blackout Crowd and Quality Ohio regarding um, the Dave Chappelle uh, performances that have been just atrocious uh, in their uh, treatment of LGBTQ and trans folks. Um, then requests for upcoming guests and conversations. Again, Police Chief Bryant, we're looking at city council members, um, Shannon, Lords, and Nick, uh, and others. Organizational updates, holiday plans, and then the December meeting, we're looking at having a uh, in-person potluck for um, the folks uh, folks there. So that's pretty much it for um, the, um, the round table. Um, just a couple things from updating for the Ohio Name Change Legal Clinic. Trans Ohio, uh, please, please update and contact Trans Ohio or, L L or Octopus LLC if you hear of folks in any of the 88 counties um, being required to publish notices of birth certificate changes that, um, you know, should not be, ha we should not have to publish those. And then similarly, if you're hearing anything that any of adults uh, were changing their names, or I'm sorry, we were changing their, uh, their gender marker, are being asked to provide medical records or documentation. We'd like to know about that. Um, then there was also a letter from the Ohio Name Change Legal Clinic members, um, to um, members at Equitas Health, um, which um, the members that were involved with that were Equality Ohio, Trans Ohio, Octopus LLC, and Living with Change. And that was to support, again, to BIPOC employees and former employees of Equitas Health, in addition to, um, and then in addition, oh, in addition to regular second Wednesday clinics on November 10th and November 8th, uh, that the um, name change clinic will be putting on. We're going to uh, probably have a special meeting on December 11th to focus specifically on birth certificate. Uh, then for <clears throat> then for um, Octopus LLC um, tomorrow, Tuesday, November 9th. Um, a teacher from uh, Worthington Kilbourne High School, uh, his name is Dave Strasberg, is, uh, teaches a, an amazing course uh, called American Political Thought and Radicalism. Loving to see uh, courses like that put on in, in our high schools. Um, that class examines the nature and dynamics of political dissent through the study of contemporary issues and movements. And they uh, usually invite guest speakers in for a range of perspectives. And so tomorrow there's specifying and uh, focusing in on uh, trans individuals in the community. And um, I'm gonna be uh, honored to be a part of, of that panel um, along with uh, several other people from, uh, from the community. I think there's gonna be at like four of us maybe. Then um, the visits to Warren Correctional um, started again in August uh, for the trans support group at Warren Correctional. Um, we are planning to add Dayton Correctional to that uh, and do that earlier in the morning, the same, uh, the same dates, uh, which is the uh, third um, Tuesday of each month. Um, and I'm anticipating that in November we'll be, we'll be adding Dayton Correctional. There's just some uh, paperwork that they're finishing up to uh, finalize that. Um, and our support groups weekly and our monthly support groups continue presentations at the Trans Ohio Symposium. Uh, the legal part of that, which wasn't able to be presented um, at the symposium has been uh, moved and should be taking place sometime in November. I don't have a date for that yet. Um, but uh, anyone who wanted to uh, see the legal uh, track for that, um, that should be taking place in November. Um, one of the things that um, I'm gonna be presenting on that is detention, arrest, incarceration, seeking justice for accused, and convicted transgender defendants. And then um, in addition, Columbus City Schools Student Support Network, uh, working with them. I know Brandon's also involved with that, uh, folks from KYC um, and Octopus. So, um, and then the, we're dealing with trans and GNC policy approvals and um, now getting into the administrative guidelines and policies. And um, we're having uh, more meetings on that coming up uh, for the planning for Columbus City Schools trans policies. Um, and the advisory group for trans issues for Planned Parenthood continues for Central and Northeast Ohio 
um, and that all uh, is continuing to take place. Alex, I'm, I'm involved with that. And then uh, December 2nd, 2021, um, I'm gonna be traveling to since near Cincinnati to uh, talk to a GSA in uh, Walnut Hills High School um, about trans-related issues and experiences. So that's kind of uh, some of the things that are coming up. And that's it. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Kimberly Sue. Um, Zach Stonewall, Community Center. Good afternoon, everyone. So I am going to just drop these updates into, I've already dropped them into the shared document that everyone has. And I will also just drop a link to a PDF with our updates on it as well. Um, this week, we have a few things going on. We have mass giveaways happening and I've listed them as Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that's what we advertise on our events calendar. But if anyone shows up Monday through Friday, if there is someone in the building and you need a mask, feel free to stop on in. We have plenty. Uh, tomorrow, November 9th, it is the final session of our financial education series with First Commonwealth Bank. It'll take place virtually at 6 p.m. Again, on that document, there's a link for registration. The topic being covered will be protecting your ID and other assets. We have our At the Center Facebook Live monthly virtual event happening this Thursday at 11.30 a.m. So if you wanna hear some more updates, we are working on having a guest since it does fall on Veterans Day, but that is still in the works. On November 17th, our Women's Book Club is meeting. They're reading Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vandera. So if you would like to sign up for that, and if you read that text, you can find that link in the updates as well. November 18th, we have the 2021 Donald R. Hallman LGBTQ Plus Veterans Recognition Ceremony. So if you're not familiar, we nominate, or we have a selection and nomination process to honor LGBTQ plus veterans that we have every November. So that is taking place. The ceremony to recognize those who are being honored is November 18th from 5.30 to 7.30. There are light refreshments being served beforehand. So please sign up for that. And again, you can always add some of your LGBTQ plus serving events to our program events calendar. I've included a link as well as the description of where you can find the submission button. And we are very excited for these programs and looking forward to more moments of collaboration. I have a lot more that we are going to be working on for Trans Day of Remembrance as well as World AIDS Day coming up on um, December 1st. But right now those are collaborative and still being worked on. So I don't want to get ahead of myself and start giving out information when it's still being worked on. But keep a lookout on our events calendar as well as our social channels. And if you would like to, we also have a newsletter that you can sign up for as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Zach. Leo, KYC. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, so I put everything in the Google Doc, probably because it's a lot of information, um, but I'll just kind of share the highlights. Um, as always, uh, the best way to keep uh, your organization and everyone else updated. Uh, we have a KYC newsletter, but also our Instagram and Facebook tend to be the best ones since we put daily or weekly, at least something. Um, we have our curbside resource um, that youth between 12 and 20 can uh, sign up and get resources for their house and everything. So they can sign up and do that uh, weekly so that they can get foods and shampoo, conditioner, uh, coats, things like that. Um, and yeah, then we have our KYC Discord server that's open Tuesdays and Thursdays from four to six. Uh, Wellness Wednesdays that we've been doing uh, every Wednesday from 4.30 to 5.30 with our uh, behavioral health practitioner, Savannah. So that's been going pretty well. It's kind of like a support group for our youth during that time. Uh, Art Club every Thursday. QPOC, our Queer Youth of Color space, we're starting to have on Tuesdays now from 5 to 6. And then Gender Scope um, on Friday on the 19th from 5 to 6 p.m. at KYC. Then our drop-in kind of general programming and everything uh, that same Friday of nine, the November 19th after gender scope. And then we're gonna have movie night and game night um, on the 12th and the 26th from five to seven on Fridays. And then just some ways to help since the holidays are coming up and everything, we have our holiday drive that's gonna be in, in December. Um, you can go to our website and also put the link on the 
Google Drive, um, where we have our wish list of just things that youth and families have told us that they need or want. So feel free to do that and share that if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and just sharing our flyers of our programs and events that are happening. Um, we also started this Saturday, our family and youth group. So now we're open to, well, with that group specifically um, from youth to five, from five to 12, which is really exciting <laughs> to have like those little, um, the younger side of youth. Uh, so we're really excited to have that and be that space for them since we know that that's not really something that's here in Columbus or very much out there. Um, so we'll have more information about that and what the next date will probably be next year and all of that for next year. So, but we're really excited about that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, basically. Just, Thank you. By announcement that we will be, um, the Health Coalition will be donate, uh, will be adopting a KYC family, uh, youth family. So I think Jen is going to give me that family's needs um, this week. So I will send that out to everyone um, and we'll find out a way where everyone can donate. I'm thinking, Leo, I'm trying to figure out if I can do like an Amazon list so everybody can kind of virtually do that. Um, but if not, um, Zach, um, I will be coming back down to your site again to see if people can drop off some items there and we can coordinate some logistics to pick up there. So whatever the family needs, we will be adopting the family again this year. Um, and then um, I may need a quick turnaround if there is some need for a Thanksgiving need. Um, and so whether that is donating food for a family, but whatever um, Jen says, uh, we'll be actively involved with helping you all this uh, holiday yes, season. For sure. Thank you very much. We appreciate Thank it. For sure. You're Thank welcome. You. you are so welcome. Um, so let me go back to my agenda. Um, no one from Equitas is on. Um, so we're going to go right into um, uh, Rhea. Yeah, um, so I have um, a few updates that might be of interest from the ASIN Aero Alliance of Central Ohio. Um, so in early October, we led um, an HIV and STI prevention workshop um, that specifically is for um, the ACE community um, and targeting um, professionals on college campuses um, to better understand how they can support the needs of asexual folks as it relates to HIV and STI prevention. Um, so if folks are interested in anything relating to that, I'm more than happy to share the slide deck out. Um, we also just had ACE Week, which is recognized in the last full week of October each year. Um, we, there were over um, about 60 events, I think, um, worldwide this year, um, and three of those happened um, in Ohio um, alongside our partner, the Equitas Health Institute. Um, we ended up reaching over 500 folks during that week, um, but something I thought that was particularly useful for everyone on this call um, was that we specifically had um, a social hour for folks to identify within the ACE community. Uh, because those spaces do exist for um, particularly youth and young adults through KYC, for instance, um, and then a couple college campuses um, have ACE and Arrow student groups. Um, but that was something that folks shared was really, really helpful. So we're anticipating continuing that um, outside of ACE Week celebrations, um, and we're trying to figure out what a good schedule for that was. But um, essentially, there were several folks that shared this was really good for their mental health, just to connect with like other ACE folks. Um, and yeah, so we had, I think, about 40 total for that. Um, and then we're going to be partnering with Centerlink um, through a microgrant program um, to do some targeted outreach, particularly around um, the Equality Act um, in the coming weeks, um, really the coming months, actually. Um, so definitely you'll, you'll see some of that stuff from us and please feel free to reshare it. Um, and then I have a quick thing from Kenyon College that might be of interest to folks. Um, every year we host a vigil and um, um, a talk um, in recognition of Trans Day of Remembrance and Resilience. And this year the vigil is in person, which probably would not be of interest for folks since there are already those events happening in Columbus. Um, but if you're interested, um, we do have a virtual, the talk is going to be held virtually. Um, and this year's presenter actually um, is um, a reentry program manager for 
uh, Los Angeles County um, Public Health. And so um, he's gonna be talking about his work with um, specifically doing work with trans folks who are um, currently incarcerated or, uh, or formerly incarcerated um, and specifically like support resources, um, support resources that they've developed and, and what they do um, to help with assisting folks um, into, into reentry. Um, particularly since like the two weeks, um, two weeks, first two weeks of re-entry can be some of the deadliest um, times for formerly incarcerated folks. So if you're interested, um, I thought that might be of interest to folks, but I will drop that link in the chat. Um, it hasn't been posted on social media yet, but the graphic just got finished. So it's probably gonna get posted like the end of this week, um, but y'all have the link. So you can go worry about that. Thank so, you. All I got. All right. Uh, Sam Gill. Uh, Sam Gill is our new uh, outreach uh, outreach community health worker here at Oklahoma Public Health. His first day, um, and he has information that he would like to share with you. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Brandon. Um, as I've been introduced, I'm Samuel Camacho. I'm one of the new health disparities outreach workers. I'm so grateful to be here in this meeting on my first day. I feel I started on the right foot when it comes to where I stand. And um, the reason I took a little time is because I'm also an ACA navigator. What does that mean is that I'm able to assist. I'm certified to guide through the marketplace. Right now it is the time from November 1st to December 13th, and there's a possibility that it's gonna be moved to January 15th for all individuals who doesn't have health insurance to be able to take advantage of the tax breaks and all these different things that our current president has been able to reestablish. So if you wanna take advantage of that, um, I'm going to put my phone number on the chat. I also have a flyer that hopefully I'll be able to send through Brandon to you guys. Um, I'm a Spanish speaker, and I also have a colleague that is a Somali speaker. So we are with UCAN Ohio, which is the Universal Health Care Action Network here in Ohio. And we are really happy that we're gonna be providing this and that now there's really good opportunities for families, three out of the four families that um, apply usually get zero monthly installments because of the tax credits. And that is something that um, we can all take advantage of. So again, I'm gonna put my phone number in the chat and hopefully I'll be able to send you the flyer. So. I'm also familiarized with the Ryan White for those in Equita, so I'm able to find a way to both find uh, Marketplace and Ryan White, so they both uh, provide care for the patients who have that, um, who are currently in that program. So Samuel Camacho, I'm at your service, and thank you, Brandon, for letting me share this opportunity to everybody. You're welcome. Um... Dr. Wilmot, I see that you were on. I didn't know if you wanted to share anything with us. Maybe you stepped off. Helena? You have anything you want to share with us? Absolutely, Brandon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was eating part of my lunch. <laughs> um, hi, everyone, and good afternoon. Um, Thanks, Brandon, for allowing me to uh, give a few quick updates. Um, I guess I'll give some updates regarding um, just reiteration of the open enrollment dates for Medicaid. Um, as you all know, or many of you know, I'm with CareSource. I'm a community marketing representative, and I help to um, serve on in this coalition group. Um, for the uh, Medicaid open enrollment for the state of Ohio is currently open, so individuals can contact the Ohio Department of Medicaid to make their updates and um, enrollment changes. The official open enrollment month um, for this year is December, so December 1st through the 31st, but if anyone wants to call and make those um, selections and manage care plan company um, changes, they could do so now. I could put that number in the chat box. 
Also, um, regarding some events that uh, we at CareSource um, are participating in, and these organizations are also open to any other resource vendors who are interested in um, tabling or speaking. There's one with the Ohio, um, sorry, I'm with the um, Ohio Women's Alliance. Um, it's a Be Well series. So um, I have participated last week on Thursday and um, their Be Well series is a weekly mental health support program that's focused on opening the dialogue about mental health for black, indigenous women of color while providing resources to maintain optimal physical, mental and emotional wellness. And um, Again, this event is uh, hosted by Ohio Women's Alliance, which is a reproductive justice organization, uplifting and prioritizing overall health and wellness for women across Ohio. So they do have, um, they're having this series every Thursday, beginning November 4th, which was last week through December 9th. And there's no session on Thanksgiving Thursday. So I'll include also in the chat the um, registration link if anyone's interested. It also includes contact information um, for the person who's organizing it. This is housed at Central Community House on 1150 East Main Street, uh, Columbus, Ohio 43205. And then there's a resource pop-up event that's gonna be happening on Friday, November 19th. That's hosted by Sawyer Trevitt Community in conjunction with Urban Strategies. So um, I can put the contact person's name on that if anyone's interested in coming out to support. We do have um, the last two times I was there providing uh, resource information. There was another department from Columbus Public Health that was there um, and other organizations as well. So if anyone wants to share anything, they're more than welcome to come out. Thank you, Brandon, for allowing me to speak. I, I think you're on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry, Helene, you can put all that in the document that I shared with you. Um, okay. I'll send that out to everyone else. Okay, the Google Doc? The Google Doc, yep. Okay, thank you. Yep, I just sent it back to you, so just in case you didn't get it through email. Okay. Uh, anyone else have any announcements? Any celebrations? Any rumors? Um, I would ask that um, before you uh, uh, all uh, step off of the call, if you can just do our quick evaluation of today's meeting. Um, if there is nothing else, and I put the link in the chat there, if there is nothing else for the good of land, um, I will see everyone on Monday, January the 10th. You have a question? Yes. Um... I'll go ahead. Thanks, Brandon. Um, I just wanted to ask Leo the information because um, I want to make sure I'm trying to get that in the Octopus Weekly Bulletin. Um, the information about the youth group. I saw Jody had posted something. Jody Davis posted something on Facebook. Is that, that's just starting, right? And it's going. Are all the details going to be in the uh, Google Google Doc um, information? So with that one, we had our first meeting of that specifically this past Saturday. We'll have more updates on when the next ones will be here soon. We're still trying to see what dates and stuff work out best. Um, but I will for sure make sure that um, you get that information as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yep, that's it. All right. Uh, everyone can start with, um, the evaluation. Um, if not, you will uh, see or hear from me virtually uh, as it comes up with our projects that are coming up in Thanksgiving and Christmas time for KYC. Uh, we do plan to have our first webinar series uh, starting off in uh, January. 
um, as talking about racism in the LGBTQ community. So please uh, stay tuned for that. Um, that should be heading off. Um, again, we'll be taking all of your program ideas um, and seeing how that we can work with that. Um, I will send out also the subcommittees um, that are available for the coalition. Um, this year, again, um, it says that um, um, this year uh, we'll be starting back up LGBTQ Wellness Week, hopefully working uh, with Trans Ohio on their team for uh, the Trans Career and Wellness, hoping that will be launched some way, somehow, again for this year. Um, so again, um, be looking for some exciting things and I'm excited about all the things that you all provided us uh, for programming ideas. So again, uh, everyone have a happy and safe holiday um, and feel free to contact me for any information or if you have information that you want to get out to the greater network, uh, feel free to send that to me as well. If not, please fill out the evaluation and happy safe holidays to all. Bye everyone. Hey Brandon, did you see my um my note? Uh yeah. Um oh can you use do you have Google? Um through personal, but not through work. Yeah, just, just just try to get it through your um let me see. Forward it to your personal Google address just because so it because it signs in from it. If CareSource doesn't use Google Docs for whatever reason, and mm -hmm. then just add it in from there. Okay. Signing through through your personal uh, email okay. address. All righty. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, can you do uh, me a favor? Can you send me the email of your health equity director too? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you so much. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye bye.